Hi friends. <laughs> Welcome to our Wilderness Basics series. We want to create a fun place for you to learn super basic nature, bushcraft, and wilderness skills. Oh my gosh. Well, I was going to say I have a very special guest <laughs> today, Miss Liliana Whitman, but you brought an additional special guest. Who's this? It's a woolly bear. It's a woolly bear. Oh, look at that. So it was all curled up. And now it's moving around. Why is that? Uh, curling up is its uh, basically defense. Its defense mechanism? Yeah, I imagine with those big spines, they even wasps or things would have trouble getting in there and doing any damage to them, wouldn't mm -hmm. they? Yeah. These are pretty cool animals. And yeah. I've noticed you have a, well, you have a, an affinity with many animals, feathered, mm -hmm. furred, hooved, whoa, and of all <laughs> kinds. But woolly bears, you definitely have a special affinity for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, whoa, Liliana. You. 15. Genevieve, Mir 15. Genevieve Mirabel and I all collected these. Yeah, wow. Your wig. I don't know. He might be mean to a wig. Oh, yeah. He's ready to he's go. He's kind of pretty, though. Yeah, don't put him in with the woolly bear. I know. He's like, Liliana, this is oh, amazing. Crap, one down. Oh, no. One down. Maybe we could share a little bit today with our friends about what woolly bears are and something about their life. Yeah. So, a woolly bear. Now, this is a, a worm? No. <laughs> 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 What is it? It's a... Hmm, can't get the word for it. Well, you uh, used to have uh, a na name for it when you were little. You're a trying calipitter. to... Calipitter. Calipitter. See, she was pausing because she's trying to remember her childhood name for these, which is Calipitter. 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 <laughs> Calipitter. <laughs> <laughs> so, these are Calipitters. <laughs> and... These calipitters, <laughs> they they don't stay calipitters their whole life, do they? Uh, no. No. And what does this particular caterpillar turn into? A moth. A moth. I'm thinking of the monarch caterpillar, which forms a chrysalis, a hard shell, and then turns into a butterfly. This is different. This one turns into, a, it has a cocoon instead. A cocoon. What's a cocoon? How is that different from a chrysalis? It's basically just a moth. It moths chrysalis. Okay. What's it made of? What does it look like? Silk. It's made of silk. Silk. Got it all it looks as if it's spider silk. Yeah. But it's not made by spiders. Wow. And these guys are friendly. They're, it's not stinging you or biting you or in any way no. bothering you. No. Some people, though, do have, are allergic to their spines. Okay, I've heard that, that some people have a little reaction to those spines, but you've never had any issues. Not really, just unless they poke me. Mm. Now there's a bit of folklore about these guys and weather predicting, right? Yeah, for winter. Okay, and do you know how that works? With the... Not really, the longer the red is, the longer the winter is, the harsher the winter is. I'm not really sure about. Yeah, that. it might be the op. It might be the opposite, where the long red is a milder winter. I'm not sure, but the point is that that has been a piece of folklore that's been around for a while. Share your anecdotes down in the comments. I don't think there's ever been rigorous research done on this, but there's some fun research that's been done on it, which shows that there may be some amount of of relevance if you took a broad average of them but one entomologist was i was reading about was saying that the uh, the winter that a caterpillar experiences can determine how much brown it has on it so it would tell us about the winter in that case but it would tell us about the winter we had previously had <laughs> rather than the one that was coming up but there is something about these guys in the winter isn't there what is so special about these guys in the winter time? So they freeze. They freeze. Don't we all freeze in the winter? <laughs> no, 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 no. 
it's different. You mean they actually freeze? freeze. Yeah. As in an ice cube? Not quite. Not quite. Because they have... Do you know what it... Antifreeze? Antifreeze, right. There's a lot of plants, animals that have this capability. These guys have it to a pretty strong degree. So it's a cryoprotectant or an antifreeze and they manufacture alcohols and sugars and that permeates their system. And so basically creatures freeze, have freezing damage because if you think of each cell as a little balloon and inside that balloon, if ice crystals form, they'll poke out through that and rupture the balloon and destroy the cell. But even though some of the tissues will freeze solid, the, the inside of the cells will not form those sharp crystals. And so these guys can survive temperatures up to about negative 40 degrees, which I think coincidentally is the same. Degrees? Negative 40 degrees. Yeah. Which, so in the Fahrenheit scale, we would get to 32, which would be where water freezes. And in the Celsius scale, we get to zero where it freezes. And then both of those actually met, meet, meet up, I think, right? At negative 40. So it's the same for Fahrenheit or uh, Celsius. But that's pretty cold. And they don't have to burrow away underground or form a big shell around them. What do they do? They usually just go in wood piles or I found this one in our greenhouse mm -hmm. in a little bit of meshy. Cool. Just anywhere it can tuck itself in, right? Yeah. And pretty amazing. That's all they need. And without any other equipment, any survivalists here, right? We have to have clothing or make shelters or start well, fires. Well, they do, basically. Yeah. They do have, yeah, that's right. Maybe if we had a fur coat like that, we wouldn't need hats or anything. <laughs> so then they freeze, it becomes spring. What happens? They turn into Isabella's tiger moth. Into Isabella, Isabella's tiger moth. And this moth, uh, does it then live for a few years and... No. No? It, for a, it comes out, basically. I'm not quite sure about this, but I'm pretty sure it comes out. Doesn't eat or anything. Just lays its eggs. And then die. So it comes out, flies around, doesn't eat anything. At least I think so. Mates, lays eggs, and dies. Yeah. Wow. A short but blissful life of flight and well, not romance. Too, too, not too short, because they get to live as a... Oh, oh, of course. They have this, yeah. this huge life before they become a moth and fly around. What if we had our, a huge life? Not even looking as if we were ourselves. Well, I guess we sort of do, but... That's... That's interesting. What do you mean we sort of do? When yeah. we're... Before we're born? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I guess we do have a long nine months of life in the womb. And then we hatch into something else almost. It's... I mean, not in the same way, but kind of, right? Yeah, cause, but they also... We aren't really... They aren't really inside so Right. They're more just as if we looked weird. <laughs> and then we turned, went into something, and then turned into the us. I do, I do wonder. And there's been some, we're reading that book on, on what animals, I think, umwelten, umwelt, their sensory experience of the world may be like. And I do wonder what theirs is like. I wonder, if Transforming they, so I wonder if they remember being that. Oh, if they remember. Yeah. I don't know. And do they? what do they experience in their cryogenic freeze? Do they have dreams of someday being a moth flying through the skies when they're freezing all winter long? Or do they not have any dreams at all? They basically shut down completely. But who yeah. knows? We can't be in their minds, right? In, into any kind of other consciousness than our own. So that's all guesswork based on our 
current knowledge and assumptions about the world. Wow. Anything else about these guys? Um. I guess we'd want people to know that they're not harmful. There's some caterpillars which can devastate crops or go into your garden. These and guys... And some can even agitate yourself. Yes, yeah. Some can have things that will bite into your skin. These guys are super friendly unless you have that sensitivity to them. And they love asters and sunflowers. They don't eat a whole lot of the leaf. Also grass. Grass. Yeah, you've seen them eat grass. I haven't really seen them. Yet, oh, you haven't? Just... No. Oh, wow. Nettles, I think they eat. A bunch of plants, but they don't go in and kill plants. They're pretty gentle creatures. And, oh, snack. They don't usually <laughs> eat. I haven't seen any eat it yet. They are cute, aren't they? Yes, they are very cute. <laughs> well, share in the comments any of your thoughts, your knowledge, your questions, whatever it is about these amazing little beings. And this is the perfect time to see them in the autumn. They are out moving around, gobbling but up food, looking for a place also to sleep. in their places already. Yeah, yeah, you're I right. I found mine. You found him all ready for winter? Yeah, and it's going to get warm in the next few days for us probably, so <laughs> he'd probably come back out again and hang out. But yeah, search them out, check them out. We even dodge them on the roads, don't we, when we're driving? Yeah. We live in the country. Don't do that if there's a lot of traffic, but <laughs> we're very careful to go around them because, boy, they have big journey during the winter ahead of them. <laughs> all right, my friends. Love to you all. Share any of your thoughts mm -hmm. in the comments. And we'll talk with you down there. Bye. Bye. <laughs>